In this video, we're gonna go down the road of mastering one light. To do this, we're gonna take a detailed look at flags, nets, silks, direct reflectors, diffuse reflectors, what the differences are, and some best practices in using them. I've lightly discussed light control in other videos, but now it's time for a deep dive. Hold on, because there's levels to this. In this shot, we used only one light and went from this to this. And now I'm gonna show you how. Reflectors, flags, scrims, and nets, you're gonna wanna stick around for this one. First, let's talk about the different types of reflectors in all of these examples. I'm going to be using one hard light source with a net to reduce edge light on our model, and we will be getting more in-depth about the net later, so don't worry. Let's start with a direct reflector. Like a mirror or a polished steel, which gives us the same light quality as the light we're bouncing into it. You can see it looks like we are using a second hard light source and not too much light is bouncing around the scene. Next, we're gonna have a direct diffuse reflector. These are reflectors that usually have a silver, but not mirror-like surface. They still give us hard light, but not as contrasty as direct reflectors and provide additional spill for the background. They often come in forms of show cards, like I'm using here, collapsible reflectors that are most common amongst photographers or treated steel often used in cinema. Lastly, we have diffuse reflectors. These are usually pure white surfaces that give you soft light no matter what type of light shines on them. Examples of diffuse reflectors are V-flats as shown here, the white side of a collapsible reflector, or even a scrim, which we'll talk more about later. Besides the quality of light differences, direct reflectors give you more power than diffuse reflectors. When would you use a reflector? Anytime you want a light without adding a light. And don't forget to think outside the box. For instance, many DPs have used the white side of a truck to light a scene. If it reflects light, you can use it. And be mindful of any tone or color that your reflector may have, as this will reflect back into your image. Here are all three of our examples side by side. The direct reflector gives us the hardest light with the least amount of spill on the background, but we do get a slight cross shadow. The diffuse direct reflector gives us hard light but with a reduced shadow contrast. And finally, the diffuse reflector gives us soft light, the most amount of spill with the shadow contrast reduced even more. You can also note the different aperture settings to compensate for how efficient each reflector is. Now let's talk about nets. Nets allow you to reduce the quantity of light without changing the quality of the light in most cases. The most common nets are single nets defined by their green color, and they reduce light by half a stop. And double nets which have a red color reduce light by one stop. There are also triple nets which reduce light by one and a half stops and have a blue edge, but they are less common. There are white nets as well and are virtually the same but differ in that they reflect some light. In most instances, if someone calls for a net, they want a black one, and will clarify if they want a single or double. To show the difference between black and white nets, here I'm showing a side-by-side -side of a black double net and a white double net placed close to a light source, then moved away from the light source and close to the subject. You can see with the black net, there is no change, but with the white net, once brought in close, starts to act like a reflector as well. Some common uses for nets are evening out exposure between two people in the same shot. For instance, if one person is closer to the light than another, you can net the one closest to the light to even out the exposure. Or even to balance skin tones if one person appears more overexposed. In this shot, which I will explain later in the video, nets were used to balance the hair light with the direct reflected light to give the appearance that this image was mainly lit from the front. I'm gonna give you an example, although I'm gonna be indoors. I'm gonna slide in a net on camera right, and you're gonna see it's gonna dim down the ambient lights behind me. Now imagine we were doing a shot outdoors in which first to balance out the sun, we brought in a silk above our subject to give them a nice soft light, and then to balance out the exposure of the background that could still be getting hit with the sun, we bring in a net out of focus behind our subject in the background. And of course, you'll need a larger size than what I have here, but ultimately you get the concept you can take sunlight and create a beautiful balanced shot outdoors using light control. Fun fact, 
two double nets used together is called a home run, and any combo of nets reducing light by two and a half stops is called a grand slam. Use a light meter to know exactly how much light was cut, because if you place your nets at an angle not perfectly parallel to the light source, it can change the amount of light getting cut. In an earlier video, I even used a net to reduce the exposure of a model's arm in order to bring more attention to her face. Now let's talk about silks and scrims. They are basically the same diffusion material found in soft boxes and most commonly come in a quarter silk and full silk, with the quarter silk reducing your exposure by about half a stop and the full silk by about 1.5 stops. Silks can be used to diffuse a light. In this example, it shows the results of a full silk placed in front of a spotlight close to the light versus close to the subject. In this shot, I'm using a silk to reduce the diffuse light hitting our model's hair and shoulders. And here, I'm simply using it as a bounce to fill in the shadow and give more reflections in the sequence dress. These are standard silks that come in many kits, but there are more types of diffusion material than we can name, like Lee 216 White Diffusion, 430 grid cloth, Roscoe 3027 tough white, bleached muslin, unbleached muslin, 400 Lelux, 228 brush silk. Some are waterproof, some aren't. Some won't catch on fire, others are more fire resistant. Some will have a warming effect. Just believe me, there are levels to this and many levels of diffusion. I may just need to do an entire video on this. If we get 50 comments in the next month saying diffusion no matter what, then we will work on a video about this. And lastly, we have solids. Here, I'm using a solid to flag light off of our background. Here, I'm using a hinge solid, or better known as a floppy, to flag our lens. These are also great to create shade for your digital capture station outside. And lastly, here, I'm using a giant 4x4 floppy to quickly add a black background. Its matte surface reflects virtually no light and is a great way to get a black background for beauty shots. So all the flags, nets, and scrims I've been using in this video are available from Kupo. And now I'm about to give you a real world breakdown of using them to craft a shot, just using one light. We're gonna start with one light above and behind our model. Then we're gonna add in a mirror, which I've taped to the black side of a V-flat. Then we're going to add a double and single black net to reduce the exposure on the model's hair. Then we're gonna add a full silk to fill in the shadows on the model's right side. And finally, we add a black 4x4 floppy open to 4x8 just behind our model as a background. Now for another breakdown. In this shot, I simply want to bring our background down to a dark gray instead of black. So similarly to our previous breakdown, I added our mirror to give us our main light, added a double and single net to reduce the exposure on the hair, but this time I flagged the background reducing the light spill to get a dark gray. Now here's a before and after image showing the results of flagging the light hitting our background. Flags, nets, and silks come in all shapes and sizes from 20 by 20s that get boomed in front of cranes, to dots and fingers used in still life, to 18 by 48 inch flags called meat axes, to the folding solids I demonstrate earlier called floppies. Oftentimes you hear a digital tech on location or a focus puller yell courtesy, meaning they want one of these to block the screen reflections or flag a lens. I think this 24 by 36 inch kit from Kupo is a great start combined with a floppy in order to add light control to your photography or filmmaking kit. They are easy to rig in a grip head. They have an open end with a wire running through so you can better flag a light without a hard edge shadow and come with a carry case, making them easy to store your most commonly used gels as well. Please like, comment, and subscribe to see more videos like this on Adorama TV. I know this was supposed to be a video on using one light, but as you know, there's levels to this. I get asked, why ever dumb it down? Well, first, you're not dumb, so a big no to that. And lastly, down? Down, this is about leveling up. If you have questions, leave them in the comments. If you want to have even further dialogue, join the Adorama Discord and follow me on Instagram to find out when I will be live on Adorama's Twitch channel, where you can ask me any questions you have on this or past shows. Because for me, this is a journey. 
and you're coming with me because there's levels to this whether you like it or not.